the rock, rock, rock. Here's the other one. Three red horses on the river. Rock, rock, rock. Here's the other one. There's a kind of spontaneous thing in children, which seem, which is natural, which always seems to be there. So the children tend to play the same kind of games. You know, they play hide and seek and they play spook games, they play games where you frighten each other, you know, it's all the same. I think it never really changes very much. There might be additional things because of new ideas, new games that come in, but they're all basically the same sort of thing. When I was at home, I used to play a lot of imaginary games in my garden. Of a weekend especially, I used to make up a mock shop and make some ice cream with some mud and water and pretend I was selling it to customers. That was my, my happy times as a young child of my own. I was very fortunate. I didn't realize how lucky at the time that we had a big garden. A big garden and we had a, a vegetable garden and, um, and two fields and I had a pony had lots of animals and dogs and cats and even rabbits and birds and all sorts of things. I used to talk to the animals all the time. I used to tell them all my woes, you know, as, as a child. Um, and uh, and they, you know, they were spaniels and they would look up at you with their, with their wonderful eyes and as if they were listening and taking in every word, which they couldn't have been. And my favourite game was to play in the kitchen with mum's cups and saucers and play with water. That was my favourite. I used to fill the teapot up and pour everyone out a cup of tea. <laughs> Most of the time I would play on the landing um, and I'd put all my dolls on the stairs and I would have a shop and the, the stairs would be where I sold my dolls from. I did ballet classes from a very young age and I wanted to be a ballet dancer. And my father always had wonderful music playing in the house. And I used to dance up and down this great big hall in my little tutu and things and I thought I was being a ballet dancer. Well, we didn't really have many toys. There was no money, absolutely no money. Um, the first toy I remember um, was when I was about three and my grand, we didn't have pets in those days. There was no money to feed animals. We didn't, couldn't feed ourselves. And so I had a dog which was on wheels, but the dog had like fur on it. So it looked more like a dog with a handle for me to push to learn to walk. I probably had it from about the age of one and a half, but I only really remember it from the age of three. As a little boy, it's about four, um, I, I was given a bus conductor's uniform to wear. You had a sort of thing holding little tickets and t take a ticket out and punch it. You know, the which went ping! <laughs> and, had, and people who came to the house, every poor person came to the house had to buy a ticket from me. <laughs> Favourite toy, Scow Electric, which was a racing car game. Uh, me and my brothers shared it. We wasn't rich enough to have one each. We had to share it. It was good. Everyone, everyone wanted one. Well, we used to collect um, the Scow Electric's cars because they was... There were so many different ones, so we used to, on your birthdays and that, we'd always try and add to it so you'd have a good selection of cars. Evil Knievel was a stuntman. He uh, rode motorbikes over double-decker de buses, or like 30 double-decker buses, and they made this toy. It was a motorbike, which Evil Knievel sat on, a little toy figure, and you put it on to this kind of wheel, and you wound the wheel up, and it was like, rrr, 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 this mad noise and then it would like shoot off and do, sometimes if you put like some uh, a plank of wood or get some uh, books, it kind of went up in the air and he sort of come down and crashed. That was really good fun. Well, I had a train set, very small one, so the poor little, little, little engine had to go round and round and round and round and round and round. And, um, but, but I loved it. I had to wind it up, 
because there were, of course, there were no electric toys at that time, so they were all wind up and put on and off. It was zip, zip, zip round. Must have got very bored, I think, just going round and round and round like that. Occasionally, I'd pick it up and turn it round so it went the other way. <laughs> I had very few toys as a child, but one special toy was a toy I got at a Christmas in my stocking at the bottom of my bed from Father Christmas, which was a fishing game. Tiny little magnet with little fishes in wooden, and that was my special toy that I really ever had. It was called Haunted House, um, and it was the best ball game I'd ever had. And there you built a little haunted house in the middle, and you went around, you threw the dice, you had your turn, and you was allowed to put your hand into this bag and you had to see what it was you was going to pull out and it was some kind of jelly spider or something. And the more you collected, you became the winner. That was my favourite toy. This is my little doll that I kept because it belonged to my sister who passed away. And um, it is made of straw because it's like an antique doll. And she had it for till she was 11. And after she passed away, I wanted it. Whatever the other said, I said, I keep the store because it was my sister between me and my big brother. She was in between us. So it was me that I took over and she, I still got it. So I hold on to it as many years as I can. Well, this is it, you see. Aren't you honeying me? I talk to Maltese with her sometimes. She don't understand me, but I do. <laughs> And I change her dress every time, like every term I change her dress. Oh, what I change her. Aren't you hunting me? And look how lovely that wig is, you see? Look at that wig, how they're beautiful, they made that wig. And it's my little doll, <laughs> which is going to stay forever with me till I die. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I think being a girl, I was a bit boring. I had girl, uh, dolls and things, and a doll's house, I remember. We had a doll's house that my father made. I, I seem to think I had a sort of gollywog thing. You know those, I mean, it's awfully racist now. <laughs> I shouldn't have mentioned the word. And they were friendly creatures, these, these dolls. But they were like black people. They had black faces and black hands and things. And they had very short curly hair. And I don't know whether they produce them anymore, which is probably a good thing. There was something called Robertson's Bramble Jelly. It was a jam. And the sign of it was a little gollywog. And every time you opened the lid, you would find another little paper gollywog to collect. And so we would collect those because the more you collected, you would either get a gollywog badge or a gollywog doll or something like that. We used to collect cards, like you have nowadays match attacks. We used to have like football cards. And you used to line them up against the wall slanted and he'd have to flick them and he'd have to knock them over and if you knocked them over you won and you collected them and you kept them it wasn't any of these things like giving things back it was keepsies and they could go into the local tobacco shop and you could buy what they call a lucy which was one cigarette a loose cigarette for a penny and they would buy cigarettes if they saved up two and a half p they would buy ten cigarettes not to smoke because in the packets of cigarettes in those days, there were photographs, cards, of cricketers or footballers, and they would save them and stick them in an album. Things that I used to collect was back in the day, again with football, we had stickers. The Panini was an American, uh, sorry, Italian uh, company, and it was, if there was a world championship coming up or a world cup, you'd go and buy the stickers, open them up, you'd be so excited opening them up, seeing who you had, and then you would stick them in the appropriate countries and teams, and any spares that you had, you'd do swaps, take them to school and do swaps. So yeah, we all kind of collected the football stickers. We used to make a lot of guns out of bits of wood, anything that you could find. You used to just make, make toys from anything really, uh, wood mainly. I made a scooter and we got the ball bearing wheels from a garage called Shaw and Kilburn's. They used to give us the, the wheels and we'd make a handlebar, maybe with a, 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 a roll of wood run there. And what we used to do on the front of the scooter, on the wood, we used to get bottle tops 
and make a little hole in them and nail them on the front to make it look very ornate. Some of the other friends of mine, they used to get an old pram and they got a wooden crate, put it on the back and got a rope, attached it to the wheel, two wheels and they used that and somebody would push them along and they would guide, turn the wheels of the pram. My father, who was quite a stern man, sort of said, you come with me. And um, what have I done now is my, <laughs> my, my reaction. We walked out and walked over to the field and there in the field was this lovely little pony. And it was mine. <laughs> I remember that, that I do remember very well, being terribly excited. And they called it over to, and it, the nose, beautiful velvet nose, I remember stroking the nose. My family, uh a German, got family, still family in Germany. So I used to go as a child always over to Germany and stay with my aunt and uncle. And in, in Germany, tradition is that so we open our Christmas presents on Christmas Eve. And my aunt in her flat had two rooms, two, two living rooms, quite posh, two living rooms. What my aunt used to do would have dinner, let's say in this room, and then in this room would be where the tree and the presents are. But she'd put a sheet in between the two rooms so we couldn't see. So when the curtain used to come down after, after dinner, oh my days there was this huge, massive table football. I was just like... At school we played uh, Penny Up the Wall, which is called Pound Up the Wall nowadays. Penny Up is you all get, so there's five or six of you all get a penny, which was more money then, and you used to throw a, a coin, and who could get the nearest to the wall with their penny kept the six pennies, or maybe today, six fifty pences. Because a penny wouldn't be very much, you're not going to get much with six pence, are you? And also a lot of skipping, skipping rope, we played lots of games with that. You know, there'd be two, people, two children, one hold, uh, holding each end of the rope, and then somebody jumping in the middle. And I know, I remember that we did that a lot. Was maybe something the girls really like, I don't know, but um, we played that a lot and we thought that was very clever if we could do it. And, and it, 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 had, it got faster and faster, that's right, that was, that was the skill. Soy la reina de los mares, ustedes lo van a ver, tiro mi paño. You need, when take two, big escape, you was da da di 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 after you take one paper, it puts this. Tiro mi pañuelo al suelo. Y you need take. Y lo vuelvo a recoger. Ti, ti. But you, you, you skip, skip. If you lost, come in, you go down. It's very nice. It's difficult, eh? <laughs> dip, dip, dog, poo. You are not it. I know that doesn't rhyme, but, if, but it could. It could if you think about it. <laughs> Boys played football all the time. They loved football. They would never be seen playing anything else. Um, and sometimes we used to play a game called Kiss Chase. And you would, the boys would run around and try and kiss the girls and you used to have to run away because you'd go, ah, I don't want to be kissed. I, I, I was the boys' school. There were no, there were no girls at the, the school. We were, I had a deprived childhood. Uh, singing and rhyming games. Oh, okay, so you used to play two balls. You'd have two tennis balls and you would stand in the wall in front of you and you would play, it was called two balls, so you would play the balls up the wall and you would sing lots of songs to the two balls games. So you'd be playing with your balls, bouncing them up the wall and you'd go, when I was one, I sucked my thumb the day I went to sea. All the time you're playing with your balls. I jumped upon the pirate ship and the captain said to me, and, and it would go on like that and then when I was two I buckled my shoe and all the time you wasn't allowed to drop your balls as soon as you dropped your ball you had to go back to the beginning. Games you played at school, champ, champ was very popular uh, again not like the, the champ that is played now in the playground this was very basic you, it was literally just uh, patted it to each other. Look, there's a lot of chasing I remember that chasing one another and pr pretending to beat one another up wasn't always pretending. <laughs> Play pat ball, there could be two, three, four of you. 
You stand in front, in front of a wall and you patted the ball against the wall and it was the next person's turn. And if you missed it, then you was out. Tarzan, jungle man, singing from a rubber band, fell down, cracked his head. What colour was his blood? In Italian, they call boys who play in the street urchins. And I was an urchin because I used to play. I never went home when I came out of school, straight away to play in the streets. And then when I got home, I was all dirty and that. My mother used to sit me on a draining board next to the sink and she used to wash me on the draining board. When we was little, we would go out and we would play on the streets. The streets were, were absolutely safe to play. Your mums would get you dressed in the morning and you'd have to go out to play all day. You'd just go back for a bit of lunch. You'd be filthy dirty, come home and plonked in the bath. And you would still play out till about 10, 30, 11. It would just be, it'd just be, it would just be such a great feeling to be outdoors. To be outdoors all, all the time was, it was just, just a normal thing to do. We played uh, yeah, cops and robbers, um, just cowboys and Indians was always popular. Because we didn't have any cars then. And we could play football, we could play tennis, we could play cricket, skateboarding as well. When I grew up, skateboarding was very big, believe it or not. Well, I moved into World's End uh, for over 40 years, around 40 years, and then there wasn't much facilities for children then. So the children, the most they done was play around the gardens. There were some lovely gardens and play areas, climbing frames. So there was play areas on the estate um, and you would go down and play. There was a slide and there were swings and then there was another area. Anyone in Chelsea watching this that is my age will know it was called the boat. So you would go around and you would just play at the boat and it was just a concrete boat and you just used to hang around there and play at the boat. That's what it was called, the boat. I don't know if they're quite so popular now, but we used to have a lot of adventure playgrounds with lots of climbing frames and swings and ropes and that. We used to go to, quite near me was Bishop's Park. Um, it was a bit of a walk, but we used to walk a big gang of us and go over there for hours. Yep, so every evening at about six o'clock, we used to have a porter, Mr. Lease. Anyone from my age who lived on Cream Run Estate will remember him. And he used to come out with his Alsatian dog, Alsatian dog, and make us go home. We had to go home, I think it was about six or seven o'clock. So he would send us all home, but we would pretend we was going home and we'd all come back out again. When we first moved into Wall's End, the river was just across the way, so it was quite an exciting place for many children because they'd never seen it before. And one day, my son, he was about seven or eight, went with two. I didn't know he had gone because he wouldn't have been allowed to go. But he went with two friends and climbed into the river. They were locking about in the river and his friend got stuck in the mud. They tried to pull him out, but the mud just ate him away and he got drowned there and then with, with my, my son and his friend not being able to save him. But when I came out of school, all my friends, we got together and we all played together in the streets. I played cricket in the builder's yard where we got some white paint and we painted the stumps on the wall and across the top we painted the boughs. And believe it or not, I went back there and there's some of the stumps in white, still on the wall. We used to wet the cricket, wet a tennis ball, chop at the other end, bite at the other end, would bowl the ball, and you would try and hit it. If you hit it above here, say, you got a four. And if you hit it above there, you got a six. And you could never say I'm not out because the white, the wet cricket, uh, the white tennis ball would be a mark on the wall. So if you were out, you were out. You couldn't argue. Take our jumpers off, jumpers for goal posts, and uh, have, a, have a good old game of football. And that, that was quite big. A lot of boys used to come out from all, all the other streets and we'd, uh, we'd have a good old game for like, you know, a few good hours, so. The most popular game on the street, actually on the street, was uh, runouts, which is you have an area that's base, somebody protects it, and you all have to go and hide around the streets and try and get back to base without anyone 
touching you. When I had enough money and I saved my pocket money, I bought a pair of rolling skates. So there was hardly any traffic. And we used to meet up in Richmond buildings, roller skate all the way down Dean Street, all the way down to Rupert Street, round Piccadilly and along the Strand. And when you got to the Strand, next door to the Savoy Hotel, there is an alleyway. And the alleyway goes down, and when you get just before the bottom, there is a great big flight of steps. So we used to roller skate there, and then we'd roller skate down the hill, and you had to put your brake on like that, one foot behind the other, to stop. And it was a challenge, who got nearest to the step? Very, very dangerous. No accidents, I'm pleased to say. Uh, went out, out on our bicycles, wheelies was, was big. We, could, we used to have a competition to see who could do the longest wheelie. That, that was really good and dangerous, may I add. And marbles, always marbles, where you would roll your marble along the curb in the gutter and the other boy would try and hit your marble. If he missed it, you could go and have a try and hit his. I used to collect marbles in a little, a little bag. The manhole covers outside in the streets, they're still there. They're, we used to play marbles and at each end of the drain there was a little hole and you had to flick the marble around and get it into the little hole. One of the things I used to do, I used to love climbing trees. The higher I got, went, the better it was. I enjoyed that bit. Didn't, didn't like coming down as much as, <laughs> as going up. We used to go out and try and get, um, we used to call it nesting, used to get bird's eggs. And uh, we used to climb high into the trees. And one of my friends one day put his hand in what he thought was a bird's nest and it was a squirrel's nest. And a squirrel bit his hand and cut him off. We still laugh about it now. And because of, of the, the, there, were, there were so few young people around there, a lot of the time, when I was amusing myself, I was on my own actually. A lot of my games involved guns because, you know, I lived in the country and I was given guns um, and I used to shoot things. It was a game. I, I don't know that the animals enjoyed it very much, but... Uh... Terrible. It was the winter and my father, he, he earned some money and he bought me an overcoat and I was wearing it, and we went down to Hyde Park with my friends from school, and the serpentine was covered in thick ice. So me, like an idiot, I stepped onto the ice, I went to walk forward, and the ice gave way, and I fell in the water, and my coat was absolutely ringing wet. I was terrified to go home. And I knocked on the door, and I think my mother opened it, what have you done? I said, Mum, I fell in. My father came out. I don't want to tell you what he did to me. It wasn't very good. It, it can't happen today. And I was sent down to the, the local riding school. And I remember the, the man who owned the riding school was Mr. Christie. He was an Irish gentleman. And... Um, they had a they had a they, they, they had a show ring there with with jumps, because I was rather boring teaching somebody who couldn't ride to ride. He used to put me on a pony in the ring, and then he'd go away and I'd probably have a drink, um, and used to ride round and round and round, and every day, I used to fall off. <laughs> And they decided, and my mother was most concerned about this, you, you know, because sometimes it was quite a, quite a nasty fall. So one day they watched me, and um, I used to fall asleep on, on the pony, because <laughs> it was so incredibly boring, just going round and round, and I would fall asleep and fall off. <laughs> used to be an old factory, I was told. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not sure what, what type of factory, but it got bombed during the war. And for some reason, because I say I was born in the 60s, late 60s, 
So you talk about early 70s, the local authorities still had done nothing with it. It was just absolute rubble, poles and poles of like rubble everywhere. So we obviously we weren't allowed to play in there, but we used to, because as I say, the gap was probably about that under the corrugated iron. We used to slither under and just spend hours, because I say this, this land is huge. It was absolutely huge. So that was, our, that was our secret hiding place, yeah. None of the adults could ever find us. The only one I can remember, and I was always in trouble, because only the naughty children did it, was to knock on people's doors and run and away. That was called Knock Down Ginger. Oh, my favourite, Knock Down Ginger. Do you know Knock Down Ginger? We used to do a very a technical version where you would tie fishing line to somebody's door knocker, so don't be doing this, and pull their door knocker and then hide behind the car, wait for them to go in. You could even wait three seconds and knock the door again. When they come out, no one there. And it was silly, really, because half the neighbours knew us all anyway. <laughs> I'm now 87 years old, so I think I've given up playing games. But what I do, I go to Regent's Park, which is not far from where I live, and there's some children playing football, kicking the ball around. I say, come on, boys, let's get two teams together and I would organise a little football match between them and I would be the referee.